Well, Hong Kong, guys, because it's time for another tier list. But this time it's going to be an arena tier list. So, uh, the reason I'm doing this now is because there is an arena tournament coming up with pretty standard settings. So I figured that you guys might want this sort of thing. It is uh, The tournament is John Slow's Clown Cup uh, 3 or whatever. I don't know. The, I'll, I'll link the, the AoE zone post in the description. But I thought that, uh, you know, now would be a good time to, to do it. Also, I'm participating in that tournament for whatever it's worth. And uh, I'm going to get it wrecked surely, but, you know, it's all about fun. So kind of like um, the other last tier lists, uh, I don't have anything, like, planned out super ahead of time. I'm just going to kind of do it and think through my process and hopefully that this... Uh, isn't going to drag on forever. So let's get into it. Um, S tier definitely is going to be where Aztecs are going to be. They've always been one of the best, if not the best, arena civilization. Um, uh, monks are insanely good. Eagle warriors are extra good on arena because you can just build the barracks without having to build the stable. You get extra relic gold. You have a really good boom if need be. Like Aztecs, they're Everything is just perfect for them for arena. Uh, the only thing they might struggle with are like uh, heavy cavalry in late game, uh, because you just can't have enough monks to to deal with that. Uh, brr, brr, we're gonna put them in C tier for now. I don't know exactly how everything's gonna shape out, but uh, Berbers, nah. other civs do what they do better. Uh, Mongols do the cav archery thing better. And they don't have sea drams or halberdiers, and that's kind of a problem. Verber's uh, advantage is mobility, right? And mobility isn't anywhere near as important on Arena. So, yeah, we're going to drop them in C tier for now. Britons. Going to put them in A tier. Uh, Britons obviously uh, thrive in the Castle Age. And, you know, into early Imperial Age in Arena, it's all about fast castling, unless you're tower rushing, but that's not super common. Um, but yeah, Britain's obviously extra range on the crossbowmen, is great for taking map control, it's good against monk openings, uh, provided you don't get your monks converted right away. And then your cheap town centers can easily allow you to boom behind it, get to a nice Imperial Age time with a good eco, and then uh, do the push forward. Also... In maps where there isn't a lot of mobility needed, Britons are also quite good because their army is quite slow but has a long range with their archers and trebuchets and maybe even mixing in some keeps. Um, yeah, Britons are, are a really solid civ, but they do have some problems when it comes to post-imperial age and against certain civilizations. Uh, it can be a little bit rough for Britons, so I, I don't think they're quite S-tier. Bulgarians. Oh, boy. I've seen Bulgarians on Arena like three times. We're going to drop them in B tier for now. Their boom is okay. But, I mean, like, their late game is insane, right? But the problem is, like, how do you get there? I would recommend opening scouts with this Civ. Uh, because your monks aren't very good at all. So try and get the map control with the, the scouts and then maybe get some relics and then boom your way into late game and then ideally flatten your opponent with the power of... Uh, Konix and Siege and, you know, armored two-handed swordsmen and halves and all, all that good stuff. I'd say they kind of play similarly to Slavs, but I would say they're a little bit weaker. Like, their late-game army comp is probably a little bit stronger, but they're, without the eco bonus, um, I'd say it's not quite as good. And much, much worse monks. Burmese! Gonna drop them in A tier. Um, definitely Fast Castle Arambai would be your go-to, as Arambai are very, very strong. Um, and they don't, don't cost any food, which is really nice in terms of getting your eco up behind it. Uh, but Burmese can also do other things. You can go for a siege and monk play. Their monks are obviously among the very best in the game with the half-cost uh, monastery upgrades, saving you lots of gold. Um, yeah, I mean, Burmese are, are a good, strong um, arena sieve. They do struggle against actually sieves like Britons. Uh, and any, like, really strong range civ can definitely be tough for them to deal with because they have very, very bad skirmishers and they don't have siege rams. But other than that, you have a wide array of deadly options in late games from battle elephants 
to Arambai, plus seven halberdiers, your good monks, etc., etc. They're just a really strong sieve, but again, they're they do have their distinct weaknesses. Uh, Byzantines, I'm um, also going to put an A tier. They do really well in the late game, and they have a cheap Imperial Age, which means you can go up to Imperial Age nice and quickly. Uh, they have very, very good monks. They have uh, not the greatest siege ever, but at least you have Bombard Cannons and Siege Rams, so that's, you know, that's all, that's all good and stuff. Bombard Towers, if need be. I mean, Byzantines kind of have everything, and because they don't have as... Like, you don't have to deal with early game as much, where Byzantines are pretty lackluster in most scenarios. They're just a really strong sieve, and like that fast Imperial Age can really make a huge difference on Arena. Um, Celts, we're going to drop in B tier for now. Really strong boom, very strong late game. They have really bad monks, and the transition into late game is always going to be really awkward. Uh, just because you can't really build up the army you want in Castle Age unless your opponent's going like mass into cavalry, which isn't super common on Arena. Um, but yeah, like then you want to get to Woad Raiders most of the time, and those need castles, which take time. I mean, they're not like a bad sieve, but I wouldn't really put them super high up there. Chinese, oh boy. Let's drop them in B tier for now, but let's put them at the top of B tier. Uh, losing Redemption really hurt the Civ on Arena. I mean, the Civ has always been very strong, but with a distinct weakness to Siege Onagers. But now, like, even in Castle Age, you can't deal with Mangonels, uh, at least not super well, if you're going for, like, some sort of boom with scouts or, like, monks and mangonel defense of your own like losing redemption was, was a really big hit to the sieve for arena uh but other than that they're still like a pretty strong sieve they're chinese they're good coomers um we're also going to drop in d tier for now uh they can have a really sick boom and they can do some really sick aggression right so you can go for either the super eco play with dropping your second TC early on the Feudal Age, getting your huge eco going, and then transitioning on from there. Um, or you can go the, in like the complete opposite direction uh, and go for the Feudal Age Siege Workshop and, you know, Tower Rush and get Rams going and you can get Cap Rams and Castle Age if you want to go for a ca big Castle Age push. There are a lot of, like, very different things this Civ can do, but... Uh, like, if you go for the aggression and your opponent sees it coming and deals with it, then you're dead. If you go for a Feudal Age boom and your opponent goes for a lot of early Castle Age aggression, then you're dead. So it's like, it's a very, very fragile sieve, and even if they get to, like, their full late game, it's not that great. Paladins usually aren't the best option on Arena, just because their mobility isn't as good and your opponent can tech into Halbs fairly comfortably most of the time. So let's put him here for now. Ethiopian. Let's put him here for now. They're not bad, um, and you don't need to gather any gold to click up to Castle Age because you get the plus 100 in Feudal Age, so if you skip Loom, then you have enough gold to click up. The monks are eh. The their arbalests are good, but they can just get clobbered by good siege. They have very good siege of their own, but that takes a while to get up and running. And then even then, a lot of their best units are still very, very expensive. And they don't have like a good persistent eco bonus. So let's put them in siege here for now. Franks, 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 Franks. B tier? Let's go B tier for now. Maybe I'll change these later. Uh, I mean, I do play a lot of Arena, right? I mean, it's always in the ranked map pool, and I cast a lot of Arena. I cast the last Masters Arena. It was actually the first tournament I think I cast at all. Like, I jumped, like I, when I started casting, it was in the middle of Masters of Arena 5, I think was the last one. Um, so, I mean, I, I do have a lot of experience with this map. I mean, I'm, I'm no full-on clown, but yeah, I would say that I have a lot of experience, but still not as much as Arabia, right? So I might be trying to think things through a bit more. Anyway, Franks. Uh, scout opening would be kind of predictable with them, uh, since they have the extra HP, can be quite nice. 
Monks are okay, not really that amazing. Uh, cheap castles can be great for aggression if you want to like drop a like t take control of the map with some scouts and then drop a cheap castle and then try and treb your opponent down from there and just keep the pressure on. That can be very good. Their late game army is very good. They're one of the few civs I'd say that paladins could be a pretty solid option. But even without paladins, if your opponent say is opening uh, mass halberdiers, you can potentially like use your cheap castles to make throwing axemen, which are going to be very good. Uh, but you still lack that ranged capacity, right? And ranged units are uh, just very strong on a map where there is very limited mobility. So let's put him there for now. Goths. C tier, I guess. I mean, free loom doesn't really do much on arena. I mean, you, yeah, it doesn't really matter much at all. And then you just kind of have to wait. You have to play the waiting game until you get to your post -inf infantry spam. But it's incredibly predictable, and unlike, say, on Arabia, uh, you can't just send infantry all over the place and raid your opponent to death, because Arena's a lot more close. So if your opponent just defends their one choke point, your army won't actually be all that population efficient in the late game. And, I mean, yeah, they're going to have some amazing matchups. Uh, like, they're still going to do very well against Britons and whatnot, but they, they, they lack consistency, and they don't... Kind of like, you know, humans they, they are, and Berbers, they like having lots of open space to run around, and Arena isn't that. Huns. Maybe even D tier? C tier? I don't know, I'm not using D tier yet. Might have to bump some civs down as, uh, as we go through this. Kind of in a similar spot to Berbers. Um, I'd say they're actually a little bit better than Berbers, so I don't know. I should do that. Uh, they have the better eco bonus. Their cav archers can get running faster, but Huns like wide open spaces. Arena is not that. They lack an incredibly strong post imperial age army, and I mean Huns they like they like Arabia, not as much Arena, although they're not like a disaster or anything. Incas. Let's put them in B tier. You don't really have the greatest eco bonus in the world, but you have a very strong tower rush, of course. You have a very flexible army. Uh, it, it's a little bit weak to like mass siege units, but you can go cameux against cavalry sieves. Uh, you can comfortably go for like arbalests or eagle warriors or whatever. Uh, and it's all going to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Incas are pretty good, right? They're not incredible. Indians. Um, I guess let's put them in B tier. I mean, they have a they have a strong boom. Uh, actually, I'm gonna drop them down to C tier, but like I don't know, high C tier, just because camels aren't generally as good on arena because you're not facing mass heavy cavalry as often. And then beyond that, their tech tree's kind of. Uh, I mean, it's not awful, but it's not amazing, and I mean, you can go Cav Archer, but other civs kind of do that better, you know, you know. Italians, let's also put them in B tier. Uh, the cheaper age up can be quite nice, but beyond that, you don't really have many bonuses going for you. Genoese Crossbowmen and Bombard Towers can be very strong in late game. You have fully upgraded Hussars as well, uh, but you do lack Siege Rams and Siege Engineers, so your actual pushing power is fairly limited. But, you know, you, you have very good monks as well. I mean, they're not that bad, right? They're, they're all right. They definitely lack some punching power, and they don't really have, like, the best eco bonus. Well, they don't have, like, the greatest eco bonus in the world, but you can still get good uptimes, and you can use that to boom if you want, and then it's, like, a little bit of an eco bonus. And they have the very broad tech tree and a lot of units that are very good in the late game. Uh, Japanese is also going to put in B tier. This is getting very crowded. Um, you have the eco bonus early on. You can go for a very, very fast monk rush uh, if you want with the sieve. And in late game, your halberdiers are going to be really good. Catapruto trebs can be very good. Your monks are very good. Uh, but you do lack a persistent eco bonus throughout the game. And you don't have the most population efficient army either. So... Kind of in a similar situation to Italians, although I'd say Japanese are definitely a little bit better than Italians. Khmer, A tier probably. 
Uh, losing Bombard Cannons was a big hit to the Civ for Arena, otherwise I'd drop him in S tier easily. But, yeah, I mean, the Khmer Eco is still insane. You have Arbalests as your early Imperial Age option, and your Scorpions and Elephants can be absolutely uh, devastating in late game. and Almost impossible to stop if you let them get rolling. You know, incredibly strong uh, Arena Civ. But they actually now do have a little bit of a weakness to Bombard Cannons themselves uh, at dealing with, like, their Scorpions or maybe Arbalests. They do have Redemption, but they miss out on block printing, so it's not like monks can easily convert them. And, uh, yeah, without Bombard Cannons of your own, it's a little bit of a weakness of the Civ, I would say. But still, um, I guess you could kind of think of them as in a similar spot to Chinese, but I think their eco is just a little bit better than Chinese. Koreans... I'm going to put him at the top of C tier. It's such a late game defensive Civ, right? If you can get to late game and get your your Doom push going with towers and war wagons and halberdiers and siege onagers and bombard cannons, that's all insane. But you just have to play so passive uh, to ever get there. And if like you have a bad map, that can be really hard. Um, yeah, I guess you could go for like a castle drop, tower rush or something, but... Yeah... You can't play standard super comfortably with the Civ, but again, Arena is a late game oriented map, uh, you know, generally speaking. So, yeah, Koreans do excel there. Lithuanians, I'm gonna put them up in S tier. I think Lithuanians are awesome. Uh, the fast uh, age up potential with the extra food is very good. Their monks are very good. The faster working monasteries is really sick. Uh, you get a bunch of relics, then your cavalry becomes super powerful, and Latus are insanely strong right now. Um, but then you have amazing trash as well. You have Bombard Towers as an option. Uh, I mean, pretty much anything you'd want on Arena, like the Civ does well, except for one thing, and that's Siege. Uh, it's their biggest weakness by far, and they can have a lot of problems closing out games. But it's not, I think, the end of the world. Like, I play a lot of Lithuanians on Arena, as some people may know as I think the Civ is really fun. And I would say that the inability to close out a game isn't... And it like it's not enough of an issue that I would put them in A tier for it. Uh, and yeah, they just have a lot of really good options against most Civs. Uh, in fact, they're actually really good against Khmer, for instance, because you have really good monks, super good skirmishers uh, to deal with any Arbalest play, stuff like that. Magyar... I don't know, probably around here in C tier. I think that they're kind of like Huns, but they have they don't have the boom. Their scouts can be really good in early Castle Age, uh, which can be very nice. But uh, no real persistent eco bonus and very mediocre siege is definitely not something that you love. But still, they're heavy cav archers. If you can get them rolling, uh, can be almost impossible to deal with. Like, if you have, like, a, b a bunch of Magyar Cav Archers, it, like, it's one of those things that, like, you has very little counter options, if any, uh, depending on the Civ and whatnot. But there's still just no eco bonus is not great, and you're kind of pigeonholed into going scouts early on. Malay S-tier. Uh, Malay are kind of... I actually even put them above Lithuanians. Uh, Malay, they lost a little bit of popularity, but for a long time they were like the arena civ and were even considered number one at some point. Uh, because the faster age up bonus is just really sick when it comes to getting a really strong boom off. Like you have an incredible, uh, incredibly good eco. Like you can click up at like 24 pop or whatever, get bit axe, horse collar, and then even wheelbarrow and still get up at like 1630 to castle age. And just have like this insane eco and then but beyond that they also have a lot of really good arena options they have fully upgraded arbalusts they have bombard towers they have pretty good monks uh you miss like a some text like i think uh, theocracy and fervor but you have redemption you have i think block printing i think um sanctity all that stuff uh Bombard Cannons. I think they're just really strong Arena Civ still and have, I would say, very few like unwinnable matchups. Malians. I'm going to put them in C tier for now. The Eco's there, but the late game army isn't. 
I mean, you have a lot of ways you can open. Um, your smush is going to be pretty good. They have very good monks. But... Eh, you're you're really missing that strong late game punch that you want in an arena sieve. Mayans, how the times have changed. I'm gonna put them um, right around where Chinese are towards the top of B tier. Mayans are, I think, <sighs> they're really snowbally, right? You can go for fast castle plumed archers. Um, or you can just go for eagle warriors and monks and then switch into plumes later on. But it doesn't feel as powerful as it used to be now that plumed archers are more expensive. The meta is a little bit more aggressively oriented. And like, say you go fast castle plumed archers, you're actually getting up to castle age fairly late because... Uh, I would say on average, people are clicking up to uh, Feudal Age on like 25, 26 pop. And the more more aggression means that Mayans aren't actually able to take map control as much as they would like. And Mayans, if they fall behind, have an almost like impossible time catching up unless you have the Eagle Warrior switch big play, which can be super good, but it's also really predictable. Um, so like, like they can still be really deadly, right? But they're just not quite as good as they used to be. And now there are a lot of other civs that are very strong. Uh, Mongols, well, I don't know, somewhere in B tier. Uh, Mangudai in Siege is insane in the late game. You can get some fast castle age time, but you don't really have an eco bonus. Well, I mean, like you have the faster working hunters, but it's not a long term eco bonus, and it's not like going for super fast feudal age is all that great on Arena, unless you're going for a tower rush, in which case, sure, why not? But as a whole, uh, Mongols don't get to abuse their mobility as much. Of course, Mangudai and Siege are so strong anyway that you can take the straight-up fights a lot of the time, but it's not, I would say, quite as good as on uh, more open maps. Persian... Kind of similar to Franks, right, with the, the cavalry focus, but you have some other options. Trash bows can be really insane. Your monks are really bad, though. Yeah, I mean, like, they're fine. War elephants can be insane if you can get to them, which is possible on Arena. Uh, not every game, but situationally. But, yeah, you're not... It's not like a, a Civ that feels incredibly strong. Uh, not like it used to be. Like, it used to be with the faster working T-Sus and Dark Age that your boom would just be absolutely in insane, like, top tier. Their boom is still really, really good, but Cavalry, like I said, isn't really as good an option on Arena as it would be on uh, Arabia, just because of the lack of mobility and easy ease of switching into Halds. Portuguese. I'm going to need to... Yes, <laughs> I'm going to need to move some stuff around later on. I'm putting over like half the civs into B tier. But still, um, Portuguese, they have cheaper monks, which can be really nice. And they have an, an almost complete monastery tech tree. You have a really good late game push with uh, organ guns, bombard towers. Uh, but you don't really have that long-term eco bonus. You do have the fast imp Vatoria play, which I hear is a lot of fun and pretty good. Uh, and I guess Vatorias can be useful in the super late game. But... Again, it's mid-Castle Age through mid-Imperial Age. The Civ just feels like it's not that great. Uh, but they still do have options, right? They're not at all a bad Civ. Smarisons. Hmm. I'm going to put him in A tier, actually. Uh, they were always at least a pretty good Arena Civ. But now they have the, the really strong archers, which can make, uh, you know, a big push with crossbow and stuff really, really strong, actually. Uh, they have a very good smush as well. You can get a very good castle age time with the market, um, like abusing the market and selling stone. But then you can, like, buy back some stone if you want to boom. It's not like the Civ doesn't have its weaknesses. Uh, no halberdiers isn't the greatest, and it's not like they have an amazing eco bonus. But they have a lot of options. They have a very broad tech tree. Uh, monks are super good. Mamelukes, depending on the situation, can be really good. And I think I would I would used to put them in B tier, 
And now I put them in A tier just because of how strong the Arbalest anti-building bonus is. Like, it's just really, really good. Slavs. Uh, definitely, like, high A tier. Their boom is insane. Their monks are good. Their late game is pretty darn strong. And uh, now they have boyars, which are a bit better. And it's pretty much all you could uh, ever ask for in an, in an arena sieve. The one thing that's kind of holding them back is uh, lack of an amazing answer to monks. And uh, a lot of the units are very slow and expensive. And you can definitely get pressured out uh, before your late game comes online. Especially by like a sieve like Britain who can just abuse the lack of range that Slavs have until they get their siege out and running. Uh, but Slavs are a, still a very, very good sieve, and you definitely don't want to count them out by any means. Spanish. Definitely an A-tier sieve as well. Um, Conquistadors aren't quite as good as they used to be. They're a little bit weaker to skirmishers, and again, the meta has shifted to be more aggressive overall, and I think that hurts Spanish in the same way that it hurts Mayans, where if you're going for your fast castle unique unit, it's much more of an investment, I would say, relative to what it used to be. Uh, but that said, Conquistadors are still insane, and Spanish still have an incredibly broad tech tree, uh, so even it's not like they're just Conquistadors or bust, it's like you have a 20 billion different options uh, with the sieve, except crossbowmen. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good sieve, right? Tadars, sorry guys, gonna put you in D tier. I mean, I'll find you some company. I'll 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 drag some sieves down with you, but yeah, we're gonna have to go with D tier. Uh, the sieve doesn't. It's arena is not a map that has any hills, so that bonus is completely null and void. Yeah, that's not great. That's like their biggest bonus. Their tech tree is fairly limited. Their siege is okay. Actually, it's pretty good. Uh, especially with, like, Timurid Siegecraft and 19 range traps. Like, all that can all be very good. But you're still not with the strongest late-game army. Uh, it's a sieve that likes, to, you know, it's it's a Cav Archer sieve. It likes lots of space to run around. And, yeah, not really the greatest uh, arena sieve ever. Two-tone... Do I put them at one? Let's be crazy. Let's put Teutons at number one. Teutons are possibly the best arena sieve right now. And at the very worst, they're the second best arena sieve right now, depending on, uh, I guess, how much you value the other S-tier sieves. Uh, Teutons do literally everything you would want for an arena sieve. They have amazing monks. They have inherent conversion resistance. They have an insanely good boom. They have bombard towers, heavy uh, armored infantry, heavy armored siege. They have paladins with seven melee armor if you want them. Uh, crenellation castles can be really good. I mean, the, the Civ has, like, everything. Uh, it's, you know, as much as Huns like the open uh, aggressive maps like Arabia, Teutons like the closed defensive maps where they can just get to their slow but steady impossible-to-stop army. And their army just wins in a straight-up fight against almost every other Civ. It's, like, absolutely insane. Uh, the only weakness, I would say, is Civs that have very good ranged units can pressure them out, uh, similar to Slavs in that they don't really have the greatest uh, like ranged capacity or defense for a little while, but it's still really good. Teutons are excellent defensively. Still a lot of options. You can open scouts where you get the extra armor and castle age. Um, and if you add spearmen too, those will also get extra armor. Um, just pure monk openings, pure boom openings, a lot, lot of different stuff. Turk. Gonna put you in A tier as well. Um, yeah, Janissaries are really good. Fast Castle Janissaries just kills a lot of different openings. Uh, it's pretty good against scouts. It's good against um, monks, you know, provided that you don't get like really unlucky conversions and or inaccurate Janny shots. But yeah, there's there's a lot to like with the sieve. The free light cav upgrade can be really awesome. It can go for scouts uh, into some sort of uh, aggressive push with a fast imperial age. 
because like the free light cav is like really really sick in terms of just always winning those scout fights and you have so much you can do with a fast imperial age that it it's so much stronger than it is on arabia right like kind of like teutons the turks prefer the more closed maps uh where they can do their their big doom push with bombard towers uh the instant chemistry allowing them to create bombard cannons with the faster creation speed and more hp like that's just way too much for a lot of civs to deal with but 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 guess what they suck against civs with a lot of good ranged options like britain's oh man uh just just watch the nac3 finals if you uh want to know why turks can struggle against britain's on arena but still like they're a really good option vietnamese top of b tier uh they have some decent booming potential with their strong or their lack of needing wood for eco upgrades but it's not like the best eco bonus ever uh, rattan archers can be super super strong as well but they are pretty expensive to get up and running at 50 wood 45 gold uh and again like going fast castle unique unit is it puts you a lot further behind i would say than it used to and their late game army can be really good, but it doesn't work the best against some civilizations as you're very reliant on your uh, strong archers. But you do have an amazing complement to the strong archers with bombard cannons, bombard towers even, halberdiers, uh, war, not war elephants, battle elephants. Uh, so like they're, they're good, but I wouldn't say like they're amazing. Vikings, uh, I don't know, I'm going to put somewhere in the middle of the pack. Uh, super strong eco, uh, really bad monks, really bad post imp, but you know early imp arbalest pushes with siege rams and then mixing in berserks later on. It can be really hard for a lot of civs to stop, but it's just they're very one dimensional, right? And they they have a clock, and you just it's always going to be a little bit awkward in early castle age because you don't really want to op open scouts because your cavalry isn't very good. Uh, I mean, you can, right? It's not like going scouts requires a ton of upgrades most of the time, but still, it doesn't feel great. And your monks are really bad. Yeah, it, not not the best Civ ever, in my opinion. So, um, now that we have their initial tier list complete, let's move some stuff around and make Tatars less lonely. Um, I'm going to put Huns, Berbers... Maybe Ethiopians. Eh. Maybe put Indians down here as well. Not the biggest fan of Indians for Arena. Yeah, why not? Magyars, I mean, they do have that really strong late game uh, potential. Gonna put Goths over here. Malians there. Koreans here, I guess. Yeah. Do we want to bump some sieves down? Um... I'm probably I probably initially overrated civs like Japanese, Italians, maybe even Portuguese and Incas. Because these civs are like all right, but it's more of in the context of all the other civs being even better that they're probably not nearly as good. So maybe Cutting off at Persians? I don't know. I'll get back to that. Um, anyone I want to jump up to S tier? Mm, not really. I think that what these four civs have in common is that they're just so strong in almost all situations. Like... These four civs have very few really bad matchups. 
Whereas I feel like all these hives have like very distinct weaknesses. So from here, uh, Teutons, Aztecs, Malay, Lithuanians, I think is good for S tier. Britons I want near the top, if not at the top, Slavs. Um, gonna put Turks over Burmese, Byzantines, Khmer, Saracen, Spanish. Um, maybe Khmer over Byzantines. I mean, the, the specific ordering doesn't matter as much as I always say in my tier list videos. It's mostly just for, this is just for fun. And I guess, you know, if you had to pick something, right? So don't, uh, don't be all outraged because I put Khmer two spots lower than you, uh, than you would have them otherwise. This is more about just talking about why civs are good and bad on Arena. B tier, Vietnamese, Chinese, Mayans, Mongols. Um, gonna bump Franks up a little bit, Vikings up a little bit. Bulgarians and Celts are pretty similar, but I think Celts are just faster. Humans and Persians. Hmm. Yeah, the maybe Persians above Cumans. I mean, Cumans are just a really weird one. Uh, Incas, Portuguese, Italians, Japanese. Let's put Japanese at the top. Incas, Portuguese, Italians. I think that's fine. Um, maybe Magyars over Goths. I don't know. Yeah, that looks that looks more or less fine to me. Maybe bump Indians up, but again, it's like relative to all the other civs, right? Maybe not Koreans and Ethiopians down. Mm, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that. I think this is fine. I think we'll we'll, we'll work with this list for now. So, hope you guys enjoyed the tier list, of course. It has been a little bit since I've done one, uh, and I don't think I've ever done one for Arena before, at least not uh, talking through all my thoughts. So definitely leave a like if you guys enjoyed this, and uh, definitely look forward to Clown Cup and all that clown action. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.